we have anyone listening who's old enough to remember the joy of getting a cassette tape and loading computer games for your Spectrum or Commodore 64, sticking it in there for 10 minutes and then going, ah, crap, when it failed to load after the blue and yellow lines up the side of the screen stop working? I'm sure we do. Let's have a look at my own first computer, which was this thing. Courtesy of Retro Gamers site and copyright to them. So to be fair to them, I'm just using it for because they've got one of the most decent pictures of the thing. This is the Acorn Electron, which was released in 1983. Yeah, okay, I know I was around when dinosaurs trod the earth too. I personally changed their nappies as well. Um, this thing had the awe-inspiring memory of 32 kilobytes. Yes, 32 kilobytes, not 32 megabytes, 32 kilobytes. Ignore that original price up there because... By the time it hit Rumbelows, for those who remember that chain, if, if you all you other old fogies out there, it was down really to £99 due to wonderful manufacturing errors, which meant it wasn't manufactured in as much of a, as many as it should have been, which is a very sad thing, as it was actually a very well-made machine for its era, and it had, unlike the Spectrum, a proper bloody keyboard, uh, unlike the Spectrum's tic-tac flat buttons, which nobody could type on. It was only with the Spectrum Plus release that you could actually vaguely begin to type on it, and even then it was a challenge. This actually had a proper keyboard. This was a cut-down version of the BBC B, which was released, yes, by the BBC, and I'll put a, um, a, a link to it down at the bottom of this little presentation, and was designed for use in schools. It was actually a well-made machine, but it never caught on because of, A, manufacturing hold-ups, as I mentioned earlier, and supply issues that held it up. As a result, it was never as well supported as it could have been. I'm going to scroll down. You can see this machine in its blocky, creamy glory. Here it is with all its add-ons. Look at that lovely giant disk drive, disk drive and, the, and the joystick adapter. Imagine trying to get that on a desk. Imagine the, sort of the size of bloody desk you'd need as well. Imagine uh, even if you, a you could afford it because the uh, the add-on extensions were nearly as much as the machine. Um, getting your mummy or daddy to let you put that on the flipping desk, you'd have to rearrange a whole bedroom to do it. I have something of a joy for retro gaming and get, computer gaming in general, and I'm going to try and do a few videos at some point on favorite games and favorite game series. Someone's got the um. A, a number of games around this on this article from Retro Gamer, and they've got the killer application on it, Elite. This game has now been through more iterations than I've had bowls of soup. Yes, we're going to be mentioning bowls of soup a lot on this channel. It's going to become a trademark, I think. But if anyone has a particular computer a game or system that they like, stick your hand up, and I'll try and do a small presentation on it and do some research on it. The Acorn Electron here was my first introduction, age around 11, at Christmas into the world of computing. And wiring it to the television with a cassette player was a great a great source of amusement to my parents who were wondering, what the hell is he doing with that thing? They, mind you, my father is still with us, still wonders what the hell I'm doing with these things when I turn them on. Um, although we have rather more than 32K of RAM in them nowadays. Good thing too with the constant Windows updates that you have on any modern machine. 